Greetings, fellow humans. I am Hugh. And I am Man. And together we are definitely not two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench coat. coat. We enjoy human activities, such as paying taxes, having existential crises, and RPG horror, horror stories. stories. Let's see what we've got today. First up, we have a DM who creates an unkillable super monster. A guy whose love of violence makes you wonder if he will be on the FBI's watch list in the future, and a bard who takes the horny bard trope to new depths. DM deliberately TPK's party to show off his special homebrew monster by Party Art 3162. I play and DM occasionally on a large West Marches style server with multiple DMs. Last night, I had my first ever truly terrible DM. Everyone in the server is different levels, and games are usually aimed at a specific tier, although you can temporarily level your character down if you want to. He posts a game for characters level 8 to 10, and has several of us who are higher level drop down to 10. It's categorised as medium to hard. I don't have the stat block, but at minimum, his little homebrew would have needed a much higher level characters for the party to even stand a chance. From what I gathered from the encounter, it was immune to all damage except fire, healed from cold damage, any non-magical damage was automatically reflected back on whomever dealt it, it had multiple reactions around, melee attacks from it did on average 40 points of radiant damage, legendary actions were area of effects that did between 40 and 70 points of damage in a 120 foot radius. The save against the AoE was dex, either 20 or 21, was immune to prone and incapacitated at minimum. Could automatically choose to reflect all spells back onto the caster. Again, no save needed. AC of 23. It could teleport farther than anyone could run multiple times around, so running away wasn't even possible. Edited because, oh yeah, I also forgot it had tremor sense of 120 feet. Jesus Christ. I mean, that's just insane that's unkillable that's stronger than tiamat or an elder lich you know yeah. it's just you can't, how do you kill that why why would you do that as a dm like do you just really enjoy watching your players not be able to kill your homebrew i mean they clearly wanted to give them a challenge but this is this is like a challenge for a level 20 party this is a maybe <laughs> Maybe, yeah, this seems almost impossible even for a maxed out level party with a lot of legendary items. Yeah, because if you have multiple reactions in a round, if you have the ability to teleport faster or farther than anybody can run, and you can pretty much deflect every attack back onto the attacker, and if you're doing 40 to 70 uh, HP per hit in an, an area of 120 feet, that's just not per hit. That's the legendary action, so they could take that on top of their turn. On so top of their turn. Even on so on top of their turns. That's yeah. That's not even something with level twenty. You're looking a minimum of 110 points per damage to any one character, and obviously the AOE ones do it to everyone else. And assuming it has some kind of multiple attack, the multiple of actions, this is potentially something that could kill a let max out character in a single turn. Worse, whenever someone came up with a clever solution, like the Iron Bands of Bellaro, he declared it was immune to them. The very obvious rock pillar on the map? Oh, we misinterpreted that. There's no cover there and it's not a pillar. The huge boulder on the map? Well, my small sized character can't get into cover behind it. She's bigger than the boulder. WTF. I finally decided enough was enough, called him out on running a blatantly unbalanced fight, and bounced from the chat. I also messaged a server moderator. Apparently, he tried to claim the stat block was only CR12. What the hell? I think the max CR of a monster is 25. And these will be your absolute <laughs> toughest monsters in the game. So, for this to be a CR12, it's, it's insane. I mean, I don't even need to really talk about yeah, that. No. Really. It's immediately obvious this is not a CR12 and even beyond the CR25. Yeah, well, and it's clearly this, the DM wants to beat players. Because it's like, oh, you're going to try a creative solution? Uh, I randomly decided that I'm immune to it. And also that thing that you think you can hide from me under, uh, actually, you can't. Yeah, there's no way to beat this realistically. If it can only take fire damage, you're looking at maybe one or two players who can damage it in the party, probably on average. Yeah, fire spells are some of the most effective. 
but then essentially it just becomes keep this one guy alive so we can keep doing damage and considering it's fire damage you're looking at the wizard or the sorcerer you're looking at keeping a party member alive who can basically be killed very very quickly and instantly the fact that that damage could be directed back at the caster that says that even if you do have a wizard that has amazing fireball and could cast it almost infinitely they could still get taken back out by their own attack yeah you're right this is a dm that just wanted to kill the party and feel a bit overpowerful in doing it this isn't a campaign this is just someone's ego trip definitely the right thing to duck out I'm in the party with an absolute psychopath of a PC. He only plays psychotic PCs. By Reddit user DiceRoller667. Just to preface this, I am not a pacifistic player by any means, and maybe I'm just being a sensitive little baby about this whole thing, so please, be brutal and honest as you can about this whole ordeal. Thank you. Enjoy the story. Brutality ahead, read with discretion. I have a friend who I just started playing D&D with, and he's driving me a bit nuts. He always plays these chaotic characters, which you can, but to an absolute brutal level. He has made two characters, Mug and Grug. To the supposed surprise of everyone, I like Mug as a PC. He was a dumb, strong, bloodthirsty rock gnome, which everybody made sure was kept in check. We have this how do you want to do this sort of thing, where we have our finishers and such, which is normal for the group. He was brutal with that, but in that game, we all were to a fault. For example, making an enemy melt away from being tossed an acid potion. But then we get his. I stab his belly, shaft my knife across it, take out his intestines, wrap it around his neck, and pull until I heard his voice weave and replaced by a snap. Versus... I throw my acid bomb at him. As it explodes, his flesh, skin, and bone melt away into nothing. Just the amount of detail into deaths and such is very... Again, I could just be sensitive about this brutality, but the example I stated above was really the worst of it. So this is already showing some signs of being a bit too far with the violence. It's important to describe your kills. That is some of the most fun of D&D. And it's actually why fighters and barbarians, martial classes are actually some of the most creative classes because you are really limited only by your imagination in what you do. You can just be like, I hit, I hit. Or you can describe some really cool stuff. However, this is going into stuff that sounds a bit more like surgery, where you're describing the snap of tendons and you're a bit more concerned about the harm it's doing than some cool moves. Yeah, it's a bit too gratuitous. Like they said, there's one thing saying, I throw an acid bomb and they melt away versus... I'm going to eviscerate them and break their neck with their own intestines. Yeah, it's... Which, is that even, like, possible? I mean, this, you know, this is Dungeons and Dragons, you know, that you can melt people with your brain. Yeah, but someone's intestines strong enough to withstand that kind of pressure. I mean, I imagine it's like the skin they wrap sausages in, you know, it can... Oh, God, oh, God, I'm doing it now! I'm doing it! Help! <laughs> until the new campaign where he played Grug, the title PC. He's a cyborg warforged with a knack for collecting skulls. And was this brought up in Session Zero? Nope. We didn't have one. So everyone but me played a chaotic evil PC, which is fun. And here we see the value of Session Zero. You can have a chaotic evil player in a campaign, maybe even two if you've got a larger party. But if you are intending for it to be a good campaign, you really need to session zero this stuff. Or at least, surely the DM should have been sent these character sheets in advance to at least go over. At the bare minimum, don't have a session zero. The DM surely needs to review the characters and be aware of them. Yeah, as a DM, that's part of your job is to look at the character sheets, make sure that everything is as it should be, revise things with your players as needed before the campaign starts. Grug was so brutal that it would make the makers behind Mortal Kombat, Art the Clown, and Freddy Krueger say, Jesus, take it down a notch. Like, he would make the enemies suffer. And since he was a min-maxer, every hit was a killing blow. So for a bar fight, it was, I grab his arms, rip them off, and then rip out his tongue and pocket it. Then 
I grab both sides of his mouth when he screams, and I split his body in two. Next round, I take my sword and I cleave it between his legs, grab the top of his head, and push down, slowly sawing him in two. And the next round, and the next. Slow down there, Vlad. Jesus. That is, that is pretty, pretty nasty. That's pretty brutal, you know. I mean, I've had my characters cut people in the half before, but I've never described it in that detail. Yeah, it's the, the very visceral detail of the whole thing that that's really, I can see where, where OP's coming from. Yeah, it's describing that he screams as he does it. As a player, that's kind of a bit too much. You are enjoying the pain inflicted rather than cartoon violence. Yeah. Because even when, you know, you're watching a violent show or something and you hear characters like screaming in pain, like it's not pleasant and it's not something that in a fantasy game I would want to describe. It's like, yeah, it dies and we can all just let our imaginations fill in what that looked like. You know, those kind of details. We can all just imagine it, not have to describe it out loud. This ends in the last game session. We were trying to save an important individual from a band of hired swords. As we were walking through, we get ambushed by two mercenaries, which our bard and warlock kill in swift fashion. Grug and I hid while we heard more mercenaries charging to the gate. So I cast snare as they run through, and four mercs get caught in the snare, whilst the other four get into a fight with us four. And Grug proceeds to go over the snared four and proceed to execute them in a very sadistic fashion, one by one. All the while, we are fighting three versus four. He gloves a man's face and wears it, tears apart another man by the waist slowly, rips a man out of the snare, lets him fall, cuts off his arm, and beats him to death with it, all the while saying that he needs to deal with the slaughtering of the hanging cows before proceeding into the next person. When he starts getting to the fourth person, he rolls a dexterity saving throw, which gets him out of the snare and back up. And all the while, we are getting to Grug. I stop the spell and plead with both the DM and this final person to leave. But nope, he pisses his pants and falls down. We ended the session with Grug stepping on the guy's neck and stomping, describing loud, wet snapping sounds. I feel disturbed by this whole thing, but maybe I'm being sensitive. I don't know. I just get emotionally exhausted by this whole thing. Yeah, OP, you're not being oversensitive. This is violence that would make the creators of Game of Thrones wins. It's perfectly fine if everybody else is on board with this. But that's, again, why we have a session zero so we can talk about, hey, maybe we don't describe violence in gratuitous detail. Yeah, there's a line and this is definitely over it. It's one thing to describe cutting someone in half, taking their head off, yada, yada, yada. This is part of the creativity. It's just when you get into the snapping of tendons and other things like that, which describe the severing of body parts in that kind of detail. That sounds like you enjoy the harm and the suffering more than just being able to do cool stuff and killing evil enemies, as we all like to do in D&D. &D. And it, like I said, if you were in a campaign where everybody else was cool with it, but it clearly they didn't discuss it. That should always be negotiated when you're going into a campaign because some people, there might even be people in that game that are actually triggered or who knows mm. <laughs> by those kinds of descriptions of violence. So that's why it's important, first of all, to have a session zero. Also, second, just don't be a psychopath. This is someone who, if they call you in the middle of the night and ask you to meet you somewhere on their own or out in the woods or in an abandoned factory, please don't do it. Or anywhere, really. Yeah, no, don't be alone with this guy. D&D player uses low intelligence and wisdom stat as an excuse to be a super creep in-game. By Reddit user, not average Redditor 17. This game has since ended, but for a while I was playing a D&D spelljammer game with a well-meaning but not very good DM and a couple of fellow D&D fanatics at the game store. The that guy of the party was playing a human bard. I was an orc warlock, and then we had an astral elf artificer, his drow wizard boyfriend, and a Hadoozy monk. Bard was from the get-go a kind of that guy. He was just kind of obnoxious and just acted like his character's shenanigans were more important than anything else the party or the campaign had going on. 
I'm sure you know the type. If the party wants to do something, like follow this plot hook or do a side quest that could benefit the party, we can't because this other planet has a bag of gold for him to buy drugs and hookers with and that always had to take precedence or he'll throw a tantrum. Yeah, I know that type of player. I've played with something similar <laughs> before <laughs> where it's like with my, with my version of that, you don't hate playing with them, but like, you're like, this would be a lot easier if you just toned it down a little bit once in a while. Shenanigans are obviously an important part of D&D, &D, but they are not to take over the whole campaign. You absolutely should be having fun and having a laugh, but don't deflect anyone from advancing the main story ever just because you want some hookers. Or just because you think it's going to be funny. Like, let me just do this for the lols because that's what my character would do. Like, mm, some of us want to actually play the game instead of watch you get us into trouble. <laughs> That, and of course, he rolled low intelligence and wisdom. So he just had to have his LOL, so random moments, which could range from sabotaging the spell jammer to go somewhere he wants and end up crashing it, or murdering people for loot and ruining the plot hooks. As I said, the DM was not that great, so he didn't really know how to adjust when his NPCs died. He was also a stereotypical horny bard, which was fine. The main problem came when one of the women he tried to seduce on some lava planet was a 10 year old child. The DM told him her age and he said, Oh, my character thinks she's 18. DM says, No way, you are going to mistake this little girl for a grown woman. Bard said, My dumb stats are wisdom and intelligence, so he's really dumb enough to actually believe she is 18. So I tell him, Bro, she's clearly a child. To which he responds, Stop metagaming. You don't know my character is approaching her with sexual intent as he runs off and rolls to seduce. Holy hell. Okay. Okay. Well, that's special. The special hell. Yeah, he should have immediately backed off as soon as the DM said she was a child. She was 10. Granted, the criminal behavior is absolutely fine in D&D. You can't really play D&D without engaging in criminal behavior. But some things should remain out of bounds and still highly criminal and frowned upon. This is not a line you can cross in your imagination. It's, it's just made extra creepy by him being like, oh, stop metagating because you don't know that I'm approaching her with sexual intent. And it's like, pretty sure it's not that hard to figure out what he's trying to do. Bard is the one with the low intelligence and wisdom stats, not the rest of the party, presumably. I'm pretty sure they can figure it out. Yeah, it's basically he's taking that lol that's what my character would do to a whole new level so now our characters clearly see him confront him and tell him yet again that you are hitting on a prepubescent child to which he just responds yes and keeps on going as he starts rolling i say all right then i cast eldritch blast on bard the rest of the party follows up with attacks and bard out of character starts acting surprised and we just basically tell him that our characters just would never stand for what you are doing and we have to attack. See, how do you fight a, that's what my character would do, guy? Yeah, you do what your characters would do. Exactly. That's really good, too. Especially when you know that the, the DM isn't going to necessarily check that behavior. Yeah, if the DM's inexperienced, we can give them a pass at this point. But especially if the players have jumped in almost immediately and decided to deal with it in character, you don't need the DM to take you out of the game then, necessarily. Well, as well as it's like, if you're out of character acting surprised, that just makes it that much creepier because if you were doing it for the lols, you might be like, oh yeah, that's to be expected because I was trying to do that anyway. You know, like I know I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Nah, bro. He then gets mad at us for initiating PVP and yells at the DM. And when he won't budge, tells us, you know, some groups would ban you for PVP. And Monk laughs and responds to that. Yeah, and even more groups would ban you for being a super creep. He then just rages and says, Fine, I will literally kill every last one of you. I have all the potions, so ha ha ha. So basically it was, I'm going to be a creep. And if you're not going to let me be a creep, I'm going to kill you. It's also a bit nuts that you think you can kill the whole party as the bard. <laughs> It's one thing if he was a fighter. I would, I would right. actually take that threat Maybe. seriously, but... 
maybe the bar barbarian, maybe. maybe. You certain classes, if the rest of the party had taken damage and depleted, you might stand a chance. But the bard is not the principal combat character and is traditionally a battlefield control character, is less about the damage dealing and is not terribly durable. You ain't winning that fight. Yeah, I can I can say that as somebody who's literally playing a bard right now. I There's no way I could take on my whole party, even at the level that we're at, because I do like four damage at a time. It's just not it's just not happening. But I love the the just the nerve of this guy being like, oh, well, you know, some campaigns, they would ban you for doing PvP. And the monks like, bro, they'd ban you for being a you know what. He tries to target the wizard of the party on his turn since he had the highest initiative. He was likely thinking he can kill him easier due to his low HP and AC. He does hit him and does significant damage and uses his bonus action to attack him again. He fails to hit. We then all attack him one by one and down him and kill him before he even makes it to his next turn. He then starts throwing a temper tantrum and rage quits while calling us a party of lawful stupid murder hobo bullies before storming out and slamming the door. We all then continued without him and the game got much better as we don't have to center the whole campaign around the whims of one man baby. In retrospect, we should have laid down the law much sooner. ELDR. That guy tries to play as a super creep in D&D. Rage quits when the party subsequently kills him. I just can't. This is this is a whole new level of special. The special hell. It was over an NPC. This is all over a 10-year-old NPC that you could have just gone, okay, I'll listen to my mates, and moving on. D&D is a fantasy game, but it is not that kind of fantasy game. No tabletop RPG is. There is no place for that anywhere in any games. There's no place for it in society. There's no place for it in fantasy games. If you think that your party is going to just let you be that kind of person, then you don't deserve to play D&D. Or to be part of proper society. This is just... Ooh, no. 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 And like OP says, like, we should have stopped him sooner. Like, sometimes when you have players like that, especially if they haven't shown, like, the super creep side of them, it's just easier to let it go and to, to work around them rather than cause problems. But obviously, you drew the line at the right place. Yeah, up to then, it was a kind of a casual conversation could have been had and see what could be done. If not by the DM, then the players could say, hey, can we tone this down a bit? We'd like to be able to focus more on the campaign. You know what they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. Obviously, in retrospect, yes, the guy was a menace. But you didn't know that at the time. He was just a problem player and a that guy up until then. Hey, man. Hey, what? What do you get when the vampire bard becomes a necromancer? What? A necromancer. <laughs> and with that, we have definitely not been two, two kobolds, kobolds in a, a trench, trench coat. coat. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and make the necessary sacrifices to Tiamat. We'll see you next time.